Hey, the Texas County Board of Commissioners uh, Transportation Committee meeting of Tuesday, November 20, 2018, come to order. Um, as is our custom, this meeting is um, a public meeting, not a public hearing. Um, and, it, and for this committee, we do record it. So just for the record, my name is Kelly Robinson. I'm the chairman of the Transportation Committee. We're going to go around the room just for the record. Mark Teal, County Administrator. Jessica Theriot, Assistant to Mark Teal. Mike Mulcair, County Commissioner. Miguel Valentin, Transportation Director. Gary Watson, Transit Services Director. We have guests. Daniel Crow, the Collaborative Firm. Very good. All right. Okay, so we're going to go right into this, and we've got a pretty, we got to keep this agenda pretty tight. Um, so first things up is the approval of the meeting minutes. Did everybody get a copy of the last one? Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, can I get a motion to approve the minutes as presented? Mm -hmm. Second. Uh, motion is second. Any comments? Edits? If not, stand approved as presented. Even more. Miguel, sir. Yes, sir. You're up. First item on the agenda uh, this afternoon is a report on transit services uh, regarding the public outreach component uh, from the collaborative firm. Gary, if you have any opening remarks, I'm just going to pass it on to Daniel. All right. Okay. Sounds good. All right. I will um, try to be brief. This is just a, a written recap as well of some items and information on this. Yeah. Um, so just quickly, um, since the last time we visited, there were a couple of things that transpired that you all had a heads up on, but I uh, want to let you know that they are successfully completed, one of which is the Connect Douglas Open House. We had more than 100 people attend the event, um, Chairman Jackson Jones and uh, Vice Chairman Robinson, as well as uh, Director Gary Watson provided brief comments during the celebration. Um, it resulted in positive media coverage as well as social media engagement. Um, and for me to expound on social media engagement, we had people check in at the event, post pictures, uh, post their positive comments, and like our um, Facebook and Instagram pages. Uh, while I'm speaking about um, social media, I think that's another thing that I can add is that uh, we've been keeping up with our, our weekly postings and monitoring. Mm -hmm. And the Instagram following is, is growing quite nicely. We're actually up to 65. That may not sound like much, but when you look at other county accounts that have been in existence for years that only have a, a little over 100, it kind of lets you know how we're growing, to what rate we're growing. So we're making great strides there. Um, the CMAC public hearings, both of those have successfully completed since the last time we met. And um, we provided support by developing the presentation and, and collaborating with uh, the required public notices. Um, other events that have happened recently are some of the community kiosks. One in particular that I'd like to highlight was one at the Fowler Senior Center, uh, which is actually really close by. Um, we interacted with approximately 30 adults um, who are senior citizens or, or people with disabilities. And I, I think that, uh, one, I should say that I was thankful for the opportunity because um, there are a lot of things that, that occur here that uh, when we're in the nuts and bolts of what we have to do and what we're trying to get done, um, you can sometimes lose focus on who we're really impacting. And to see the people and their reaction about the service, um, their delight when they realized that there would be no waiting lists, like the senior um, voucher program, there were no age requirements. Um, they were just really excited. I think if I could have allowed them to get on it and go someplace that day, they would have. And in fact, they did get on the bus and um, you know um, checked it out for comfort and gave their feedback. Um, there were a couple of other questions, and, and these are things that come about in discussions when I hear them at BOC meetings, but there were people who asked, is this going to go to Cobb? Um, because one of the seniors there, she asked, she said, I have appointments at Wellstar Cobb. I have specialists that I see, she said, and she said that she saw public transportation there at the hospital. These are just things that I've, I just wanted to make sure that I shared them. Um, there are other things that I've, I've highlighted in writing, but um, 
into this is I know that a presentation was not requested, but I just wanted to share a couple of these photos as well, just so that we can just remain in touch with who it is that or that is just a few that are that are being impacted. You can share those. Um, there are several other community kiosks that are have been scheduled. Um, one at West Georgia Technical um, this next Wednesday or Wednesday, November 28th. So after Thanksgiving, that's a high traffic day because they'll have student registration. So that's been coordinated to um, speak with students at their student center during that lunch period. And then also we've requested permission to set up during the Georgia Power Chamber Business for Breakfast, which is being hosted by the county. Um, there, I'm sorry. What is that? That's on December 6th at 8 at 8 a.m. the business for breakfast I understand that there's not a presentation but I thought that it was an excellent opportunity if people were already coming here and there are people in the business community we want to share that information with them the, the last me, will we have handouts for them well that's all dependent upon what has been approved the, the assumption is yes mm -hmm. because by then we should have the maps for the routes because the first community house is on the fifth okay um mm -hmm. and so that's that's the the, the hope the hope. the hope so whatever information is available and that we're allowed to share is what we will share quite frankly i would i would like to share it with the students as well on thursday the 28th um, i think it would be very helpful for them even if it's just the route that will impact that area uh, because there there are many different groups that have stated that um, within the student organizations that they do need assistance that it is difficult to get to campus not everyone is taking their classes online so uh, but about the fixed route community houses, those have all been scheduled with each of the commissioners. And um, the last location was finalized and approved on yesterday. And um, Ms. Wilker, where, where are you going to hold you with that? The Shepherd of the Hills United Methodist Church across from the Publix. Okay. At Chapel Hill. Chapel Hill. Yeah, they've always been gracious folks to have community meetings there. Okay. So we're all set. Here I am. Nice to Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everyone's confirmed in that information, uh, a media release was drafted and sent to um, the Office of Communications. And so that came out this morning. It's posted on the website. Um, Gary, will we have presence there um, at these these meetings? Um, okay, so we if, so let's take a pause for a second at this meeting. Commissioner Walker, I think this is good for us to make sure we understand. So we're gonna provide a map of various routes, not just the, the route that may be affecting that affected area or in that district, it's the entire, all, all four, four routes. Yes, sir. All right, so all four routes, um, and will it have enough detail that at least the preliminary bus stops? You know, I know it, it evolves. But will we have that level of detail where, I know last time y'all put where you thought stuff should be, where are we at until at least confirming it? We will have the major stops. Um, for each of the routes, yes, sir. Mr. Smoker, is that enough? We're yeah. good for at least a first passage, or yes, I, I think so. Uh, it'll give us a, a linear sense, you know, of, of the routes. Um, well, we have representation from the operator at these meetings. Yes, sir. Okay, so that would be very beneficial. Okay. Yes, sir. I'll I'll be in attendance, and our operator will have a representative there as well. Okay. So we're, we're confirming. You, are you will you have a be there communication to capture the collaborative firm yes. coordinates these and yes will be present for so all four all four third party operator third party communicator and <laughs> if the guy okay all right I, I, anything else not not to, to rush or belabor but no it, nothing right. major all right so but to this point so we get through this moment all right and um this is just me trying to get a lay of the land on the flex process you keep educating me about. I'm getting there. I haven't got an A yet. I'm probably about a B plus. Um, do we think that'll happen in December? And, and when do we start? When do we test a route, a pilot? I, I, I'd like to, Commissioner Mulcair, maybe we can have a third party operator before you leave. Now, that, a last meeting. 
that he comes and gives a, an official, like, here's where we are. Mm -hmm. Would you be willing yeah. to entertain that? Can we do it that way to not to put you on the spot? Nothing will happen to you now and then because of the holiday. We got to go through this budget process. But, Mark, what do you think? Yeah, I think it's fun. Sure. It's a good idea. Yeah. Um, the, when, however you want it, if you want it in the committee meeting. That, committee, uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. But not to prohibit anything to go higher, but I want to at least have him a chance to sort of uh, weigh in. Um, and you're a commissioner. Yeah. yeah. I mean, when you say we, we will have the third party operator, uh, we still don't have a contract with them. But they, they are operating with us with the expectation that we will finalize a contract. But, and they've been gracious enough to, to do a lot of things and go drive the routes and all like that. But we still don't have them under contract, and that's probably not likely to happen. That's what I was trying to get a feel for. That's not what we comment about the flex, the money, where, how are we going to do this? We, and that, that's my, so, right. So where are we at? Because, well, and, and Gary can, can provide more detail, but essentially all of the elements that have had to take place from the DOT side have, yes. and they are uh, awaiting a response back from uh, FDA as to when they've received or acknowledge they've received the letter saying yes we are flexing this money over to FDA. That that's correct. Right. So that's yeah. all that's all we're waiting on uh, in order to submit our application. FDA has to receive the letter from GDOT and Federal Highway that the money has been flexed from Federal Highway to We don't know anybody at GDOT we can call and find the status? I, well I, I check regularly with ARC on um, yeah, that right. Uh, what about FHA? Nobody in Washington that, that we can call? No, no senator, no, no congressman. I mean, this is what they're there for to sort of help you know inquire on things on our behalf. I mean, Congressman Scott was just here to read, right, the, uh, the other day. I mean, what help can we do? What, what do you need? Because we need a little bit more. Um, it, it needs to be a little bit more accurate. Like, well, where are we? Um, I'll, I'll check again, but, but keep in mind, we're, we're not the only jurisdiction that's, that's awaiting this letter. In, in just the Atlanta region alone, there were a hundred other projects uh, that were approved to move forward. So uh, it's, it's quite a comprehensive task getting all those letters submitted, but I'm, I will check on that. Uh, Who has to get those letters together? The reason I ask that, but they're at different stages. I know they were approved all at once, but we're on different timelines, right? So the letters is an administrative function that goes out, sends it, whatever. But what am I missing here? I mean, I'm well, the, the initial uh, notification comes from the ARC. Right. They've done that. That yeah. letter has gone out yeah. to, to the DOT. Okay. Yeah, and Federal Highway. Okay. So ARC goes to. Then those two need to go to the FTA. That's true. Correct. Yeah. All right. So, uh, so I, again, is there any help that's necessary? It's not that. Again, yeah, we are. We are biased. We are. Um, and I get there's other hundred projects, but I, <laughs> we represent um, our uh, our county, and I just wanted to know the stats because recognizing you're right, we have some. Um, uncontracted liabilities we've got expectations out here so we're sort of in a limbo and we're just trying to get a relative like okay from based on this time period how much longer because we've got planning decisions we've got budgeting um we don't know i mean i, I need a little bit more definitive that this is a goal what, i mean we're just sort of sitting here and we're, we may have to make some decisions on right so how do we get there we put stuff in the budget that will Well, it's, it's a go. The money's going to be there for us. The question is right now just that, is that we don't have an exact timetable for that. Right, so uh, again, it will be sensitive time. So Miguel, to, to your point, um, these guys are not in the contract. They're doing it on the, right, okay, we're, we're there, we, we see it. Uh, 
Ms. Mulcair, to your point, your, your, your requirement, your condition is that, well, I want you at these four meetings. And he's saying, well, when are you paying them to get those four meetings? And it's like, well, but if you're going to do this, I mean, right. So this is important to us because it, um, perhaps Ms. Mulcair, it's going to become less about you guys and staff. It's this third-party operator that we're contracting. They're the ones that need to be coming front and center at this, doing this transition, not you guys. And so. Am I getting well, it wrong? No, Miguel, no. Miguel's point is well taken, but I, I don't think it's going to be an issue with getting the, our third party provider, our, our proposed third party provider to, uh, to cooperate with the SOMAID. In fact, they're going, to, they're going to be back up here next week uh, and, running the routes with us one by a time. And I appreciate the time and so forth, but again, this is their work product. This is their routes. This is their determination of where these stops are, you know. So we shouldn't be in the middle of trying to represent something like what well, y'all came up with the measurements, right? Yeah. I mean, this yeah. is their work product. So, I mean, you, you just can't get, I mean, I, you guys get it. We don't have to labor. I think we're on the same page. Yeah, so we good. We good. We'll work toward having everybody there. Sorry, we, we went off um, down this path. But I just want to make sure, because we're coming down here to the end, I'm trying to, um, so as raised, Collaborative. Uh, what else is on the docket before December? What, what else do we have by way of beyond these four meetings? Is there anything else as we go into our last meeting next month? Well, those were the major milestones that okay. were remaining. Okay. Um, and and to your point, once those are finalized, because we have to prepare materials for those meetings, and right. it would be with that information. Mm -hmm. um, and a couple of things I best uh, Danielle to, to assist us with moving forward is, is to up, upgrade the uh, transportation center newsletter that is available to the public and also to develop. Have you ever seen that before, Mike? It's been a while, yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. And also to develop a, a trifold piece of literature that we have available. Would that be my route thing that like I get number eighty eight or number sixty six? No, no, sir. Not we're, that. No, it, it, I'll wait on that. Yeah, we're okay. we're that's coming kind of from, from there. It's coming, but we're okay. the ways from there. Well, and to your point, like of, of, of going forward, and again, I'm I'm, I'm not going to let go of this because I was always about this having a schedule. You know, again, to the point that we actually locked right. So that's ninety days, whatever, hundred twenty days. I've been saying April first. So tell me if you want me to go sooner than that. But at least an April 1st day, how do we communicate again? Um, how do we make sure these, the citizens actually know that we're officially live, we get this information in our hands, who's designing this, how, how, do, we, how do we get there? Assuming that the money comes, assuming that by the end of the year we've got this locked, then we've got a 90 to 120 days to bring a system online. And so how do we communicate that and how do we create the, the, the actual materials that we'll put in citizens' hands? Are we prepared for that? No, no, you're not. This game, we just talking about it. But I mean, our, our, how do we prepare for that? We're working in that direction, yes, sir. And, and we will be uh, designing um, and crafting some uh, uh, several different pieces of literature that will be available to the public. And we may do that through the collaborative firm or, or, or another graphic, graphic artist. But, but we realize again that's something that we we need some assistance on because in house we don't have the, the talent to create that. You can draw. <laughs> Actually, I have a minor in visual communication. Okay, okay. I was I, I know, you know yeah, I know. Yeah, I saw okay. the wink of the eye, but yeah. you know, since it's being filmed, I thought I'd yeah, answer I positively. But but if I may share that yeah. with regard to the newsletter, we've developed three templates for the staff. Okay. Um, it, that initially was a, an internal piece, uh, but we have developed three templates for them to move forward with. And we have uh, made some recommendations and have some proposals based upon where the project is at this time on how to move forward and, and what means to do that. I think it's, those are conversations that will probably happen at another level, but as the communication strategist, yes, I can speak to those when asked. I so, would appreciate that. So then we, we close this topic out, we'll keep it moving, which is, okay, in our budget, Commissioner Walker, this you and I, and Darius at least, uh, it was presented to us and to Mark that there was um, uh, uh, appropriation for website on um, enhancement. That was for the overall mm -hmm. county. Mm -hmm. All right. But we've got our own 
splash page. I don't know what we called it, but we had a splash page that we put all things, what is it called, all things transportation, yes. right? Uh, making sure that those come together, right? Mm -hmm. I don't see them as service. Yeah. I mean, it was just, you did a quick and dirty, got it done, whatever you, you know, resources you use. But there's a commitment by the commissioners, at least we're, we're uh, contemplating um, in this current budget, to go ahead and do a real revision and upgrade for our overall, in which obviously this would be the all for that. Absolutely. Okay. So Mark, we just want to, I'm just making that as a note to make sure we tie back anything we do on that splash page, all this has to sync. So. If, okay. if, if I may Mark. share, if I may share with other counties and other projects that we've assisted with, when um, there needed to be a migration from other platforms um, for their main web page, they did not delay other initiatives because I would presume that Connect Douglas will still have a standalone site. There were several months ago when you all stated that you had already secured the domain. So from a technological and from a marketing standpoint, there's nothing that's preventing that site from being developed uh, besides you all electing to do so and allocating the budget. And then it would just be redirected from that page. Because a lot of the print materials that we're doing now, it would make more sense, or I'm sorry, it would um, feed the um, goals of the marketing campaign or serve them better if we were pointing to that existing website. Uh, the same thing with the social media. It would drive direction to a centralized site. Right now, it, it, the information is very difficult to find. Understood. Mm -hmm. and not just there, but everywhere. We're, we're okay with that. Mm -hmm. and, and then I think um, we got a new commissioner, and I think that's one of her. She's going to be on that um, stepping up programming, and she would join the program and take over um, perhaps uh, the website. Mm -hmm. That's the mission of the old subcommittee. So, you okay with that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, all right. So, do we know anything else on this, guys? Update status? Gary, was there something else you wanted to share? I mean, I'm not trying to you know, push this beyond not, what it is. It's not more just a status. Yes, not from the collaborative standpoint. Okay. There's some other things. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all Thank have you a happy Thanksgiving. You too. All right. You want to get the video. Again, Garrett and Graham? Really? <laughs> <laughs> and they play the same team every year. Yes, yes, yes. 45 years now. Yeah. 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 Graham and the Saints. You know what was on that one? You're good. You're good. You're good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I'll try some together. We go to the next. Yeah. Next yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're finished with that topic. Wait. All right. We're going to look at the next one. That next item would be an update on the fixed route uh, program update. Okay. Okay. Now. Let's let's start uh, with the four routes. Okay. Uh, we've made a lot of progress on those. We're we're right at the point where we're ready to go out to the public uh, with with the routes. Okay. As is for right now. Okay. Uh, we're, we're pretty solid on the 10, 20, and 30. Uh, pretty happy with them the way they are right now. Yeah. We're still doing some work on Route 40, which is the connector route from Dugsville to, to Lithia Springs, to Cobb, to, to HE Homes. Yeah. And the main things that we're continuing to look at on that particular route are why are our stops going to be along Thornton Road and in the Lithia area. Where, where can we safely make stops? Uh, they're also convenient to uh, individuals who might be wanting to board the bus. Uh, so that's that's still under consideration. And also under consideration is where uh, is our connecting point with Cobb going to be? Uh, we're looking at the location probably right at the epicenter, uh, at the church. Um, but um, we're waiting to hear back from Kyle. We've had conversations with them, but, but they're actually in a review of their routes as well, and they're making some changes to, to their routes. Uh, they're supposed to get back with me by the end of this month when their consultant uh, makes a report to them. So hope, hopefully uh, early December, mid-December, we'll, we'll have that firmed up as to where that connection's going to be. Will the 40 go past I-20 and 
moment, or will they stay on the north side of I-20? Well, the, the, the way that we have it mapped now is that it will actually go to the Walmart All right. to, to where it can pick up or drop off people there, scoot back on the expressway, and then go down to the connection of Cobb at the epicenter. Why wouldn't you just go down, right? So, all right, I'll buy Walmart, and then you go around Dr. Patel, uh, make that loop de loop, go down, I guess what's that, we'll call it back to uh, Riverside. Put it on the Riverside behind Switch, so it's running parallel to, because again, that's all so that's one side of the road is called, one side is, is Douglas County. You pass this, the backyard of Switch, you pass the backyard of Google, you come into the real corner of Riverside that goes west, right? Back up across the corner. You, so you either can go that way up to the epicenter, or to your point, you can loop back onto the highway and go up. And what would you do once you dropped them at the epicenter? Come back, come back, make <clears throat> do the route in reverse. You see what I'm saying? I mean, if you're going to be on Riverside, I mean, if you're going to be on Thornton, and you're going to be across. And I'm just gonna say that I'm trying to think. I mean, you got industry that's sitting there. I mean, the very industry, I mean, the very industry we talk about, we stop short of industry. Right? Well, the way the way they got thirty designed, this is gonna pick up. Thirty will pick it up. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thirty pick it up. No. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Thirty picks it up. Yeah, well, I, understand. I, understand. I got it. So now we're fine. Do you look to look? I got it. That's all just like, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute, how do we do right, the 30? So the 30 comes, when, um, it goes up to where American Cancer, just for sake of conversation, American Cancer comes down Riverside, it makes a, a left one to Thornton, goes to Walmart as well. Mm -hmm. That's the connection between those two. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm at peace. Okay. I'm good. So that's that's where we are with the routes. We're, we're pretty happy with, with the way they are. Are you getting the, I mean, again back to regional transportation and working with Cobb? How are they working out? I mean, they seem when I met with them that, that initial time, they seem to be great working with. Um, um, I mean, obviously, I know they have their own um, constraints and priorities, and they're trying to sync and work together. But uh, how's it working? Are they still? They they've been great to work with, okay. um, and they as as well as we see this as a win win for both of our our systems. So you just got to work out operationally, so we don't see right. any philosophical or anything. That's that not, no, not, yeah. not, not at all. In, in, fact, in fact, I think the discussions were very timely when you set up that initial meeting because, uh, as Gary mentioned, they are in the process of uh, kind of tweaking or restructuring their routes and, and their system, and now they can take our Patrons right. into a camp right. in the way Volume. they design their route. Mr. Mulcahy, I'm sure yeah. they dealt in operationally and working through hubs yeah. and co-chairs and all yeah, that. Yeah, co-chairs. Yeah. Did that sound about right? Yeah, we, yeah. yeah I, I guess through I, it. I, yeah, I guess I have uh, uh, one question, um, and uh, I would say so. Crass is to be a political issue, but uh, in the context of the uh, ATL legislation focus and so forth. Are we kind of out front uh, in, in terms of the initiative or putting something on, putting wheels on the ground? We, we are out front in, in terms of new operations, but mm -hmm. obviously sure. there are yeah. existing operations yeah. that, That's what I'm talking that are there. But yeah, we are, we are uh, the, the, to my knowledge, the only uh, totally new start. Mm -hmm. There are some enhancements to existing uh, facilities, but we're just operation. keeping that in mind, we shouldn't shouldn't fail to exploit that that firstness yes. uh, to to financial and, and political advantage uh, to to make ATL look good. Yeah, and, and McGill and I both have, have been actively involved in what's going on with ATL, attending mm -hmm. a number of the meetings that, that they've had. Okay. That's good. That's good. And, um, so, um, right, we didn't, we didn't um, win representation on the ATL. Mm -hmm. um, and I mind putting this on record and stuff. So we, we get down there and it's a little sidebar, but it's related um, because it was important. Um, and 
So we go down to the ATL and um, we're in the Coverdale building, room 506, everybody piles in there. And so uh, let's just say the head of the meeting for the sake of the conversation comes up to me with Madam Chair. And it, it's a little huddle. And it says, well, looks like, um, uh, I won't call name, the person from South Fulton has pulled out. Um, and the person from um, South Cobb, something happened in his family and so therefore he pulls out. So now it's just you and um, the mayor of Atlanta. And so, well, it looks like she may have uh, about 15 votes. So, you know, you have an opportunity here to bow out. <laughs> of course, y'all know me, and I just politely looked at him. I guess you want to call a question because I, I know I got 10 solid. That means just eight outstanding based on my math on this moment and stuff. I lost exactly 15 10. South Cobb people pulled out once they heard their candidate. Um, it was some tragic that it was so it was eight votes. But it was very. Um, we only get. We were only given two minutes. I mean, I, mean, I had to talk for two minutes. You didn't find that challenging. Oh, okay. Lord, how do I compress what I have to normally say in two minutes? But I, I talked about. I talked about the regionalism, right? She she yeah. told a soft story, and, and you know my grandmother, and it was like, okay, my my my, my middle name is named Ramona. You know, it was all <laughs> classic. I mean, this was, but, it, but, but at the end of the day, and again, I, I talked about the regionalism that we're already doing it, and et cetera. Vote with for no problem, and there's nothing there. And she remembers me because I actually encouraged her right before she ran and said, you got it, you got to finish strong. So she said, good to see you again, Commissioner. So I think we've got an ally there. But that being said, a lot of people came up to me. They thanked me, I mean, even, um, Representative Collins says you stood up against the mayor of Atlanta and you, you made us look very good. So I, I think people have never heard Douglas to that moment. I mean, I'm in the lion's den. Mm -hmm. You know, South Fulton went with South Fulton. Our Douglas delegation went with us, right? That's how it played out. You know, South Cobb just didn't show up. So, but I, I think we, we made a good representation. Like, no, we, 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 we're bringing something to the table. We put money in, new money in. We want representation. I said, um, an urban voice cannot represent the West. I think it should be inclusive. So, you know, I had to go there. It's like, no, you, you urban, you, you did. And I talked about character areas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I share all that to say that to your point, staying here, I, I think we're in a good place, though. The mayor's going to represent us well. She's strong enough. Um, we just, my commitment is like, I got you. And we'll make sure we, we, we take advantage of that commission up here to that point. Yeah. Right? And, That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And allies and stuff. So I'm just saying, you guys, we, let, let's, let's do this. Uh, but, that, to that point, um, you asked the question. Um, I didn't tell this part of, the, of what I was going to say, and I have enough time. But remember, uh, it was January of early this year. It was right before the legislation came in, and Madam Chair invited me in her office, and we were on a cop said, "Come on, DC, I want you to listen on this cop call." It was all the chairs of the 13 counties, and it was um, Senator Reach, and he said, "Hey, we got this model coming up, and I just, you know, just you know, legislating. I just want to bring you guys up to speed." And of course, I get on the phone and I talk about House Bill 170, great idea, you know, great money funding, but okay, what about this? He says, yes, Commissioner, we know all about Douglas County. That is the model that we're following for regional transportation. That was his comment. Mm -hmm. Douglas County is the model that they use to create this ATL. The, the way we collaborate with Cobb, the way we're working towards the homes, like, that's what we're talking about. And so you ask me, you know, are we out there? Absolutely. But now how do we leverage this? Well, so I knew the answer. But, uh, yeah. I want to do it. Yeah. 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 I, I think your uh, your challenge was, was politically astute, and I think uh, it really was much more positive than, right. than negative in its, Absolutely. In, in its outcome. Oh, it was. I, I felt good. We got a good stature. A lot of comments. People came up to us, and it, like, they, it was like they were waiting for a different voice as opposed to just one singular, you know. Yeah. Really, guys? Good. Anything else? Not only that. Keep going. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Miguel and I met last week with Justin Risen, our third party uh, oh, yeah. operator, and we talked about budget. Yep. And numbers. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so. Finally. This is where we're at. Right now, and the, the two the two main things to look at are the yellow and the blue okay. down at the bottom of the page. Yep. Right. 
Okay, so it's first yellow seed. Okay. And so, so what we're what we're looking at for 2019 is the total operating cost of 2.272 million. And part of that is because we we've got some initial st startup costs that we're going to have to have, including mm -hmm. software, uh, computer equipment, things like that. Well, pretty. You know, in my mind, I've, I've got my two million threshold. We're recognizing the startup calls, and I think we're going to have to frame this accordingly, right? Um, but keep going. And the good thing, the good thing about these startup costs is that we have other MTA grants that we'll be able to utilize to help pay for the startup costs. With that, that won't come out of the the CMAC money. All right. So these startup costs, there were buses. Uh, we recognize that there was what we're going to call ramps, not ramps, but stations, uh, bus stops. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you call the things that you show under the shelters, shelters yeah. and, and the signs? We knew, we've always acknowledged that there was some operational costs that we knew going through, but I'm thinking that that would have been caught up under any two million, that that was more than enough based on the comment I heard. Now, you know, we're a little bit 10% above the two million. I'm like, okay, if this is where I'm like, okay. I thought we were all in on that. Mm -hmm. Well, well, again, <clears throat> the back when we first started this, the, the two million was our our best guess guess estimate, and there there's still going to be some some wiggle room in this, and Miguel maybe can speak to it as well, but. This this figure, according to Justin Rising, is is based like on a, a worst case scenario. If if we depend, if we have to have the maximum number of like bus drivers, um, uh, administrative costs, uh, things associated with that, he he's saying that he doesn't believe that, that our expenses will actually be this this much, but he had rather program too much than not enough and have to come back later and ask for more. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll be a couple star calls. I, in my mind, I knew we had five shelters and all that stuff, so let's want to give a crack a pin to that. But we, we were pretty consistent about asking this back to what is this going to cost us and our operational impact? And I, I haven't forgotten that experience that we went through. We were, we were always asking, we need to know what this was. And we came up with this two million marker and we, we realized this. And we, we, we constantly asked the question. It was that when we were told last when we, we approved this thing, the third, that there's more than enough, is what I heard. There's more than enough um, to do what we need to do in the context of this. Um, it feels like it's sliding a little bit. Not going to market this is not. This has to stay within what we do. We were clear on we're doing long-term capital planning, and we, that's why we constantly ask, like, okay, can this be done? Show us your plans. All oh, we got it. We could. There's more than enough money. Yes, it is. And now all of a sudden, we're at the door. like, no, that wasn't our level set. That was too, too, too. That was a very good experience to know what was said and not said, and how we got here. I want to be cautious and careful about exceeding that two million operating budget. Um, we talk about operating, though. I, I guess start to take that to the side, my little capital. I can be coupled to two. But I, I mean, it, it has to stay. We set expectations, and we said we could do this without an in-depth feasibility. I asked point but now I know I could have done it myself, but that's not my job. I want to see how this is going to play out. We finally got down here to the operate button. It can't be the bait and switch. It's like, no, you, 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 you can't imply and get us to commit to something. Then like, okay, well really it comes out to be this. Like, God, we were very clear on this. And this guy, I mean, again, it wasn't you, you were messaging that we could do this. We, we, he, he, he's given us comfort that there's more than enough margin in there to do what we got to do. I, 
I know I asked after we got beyond the vote, like, okay, I want a budget. Well, we, we can't get to that, right? We, we, we got to work through this. Mm -hmm. I just don't. My, you know what I'm saying? No, I got to no. say it while you're here so no. that when you're gone, and at least I got a record yeah. and, and keep it honest. Like, we had an expectation not to exceed. So well, we didn't put that as a, mar a marker, but I, I think we, we expressed it many a times and it, we bound ourselves with our own narrative as we walked through this process. I just had to, I mean, they brought up the budget, and I just want to stay on that number for a second. What are your thoughts? Yeah, uh, I, I don't disagree with what you said. Uh, specifically, though, uh, let's drill down. We're talking about startup, and we're talking about software and shelter. How many, how many shelters are we talking about? Best guess. Well, for the 2019 budget, and that's a, the shelters I included as a separate DLR. Separate from this, when we uh, we had asked for four shelters in 2019. Four. See, but I'm okay with four. The fact that it's separate yeah. from 19, and they're still from the get go. Over. Yeah, and they're still over. See, mm -hmm. I was going to give it credit without digging deep. It's like, okay, I get it. I would have paid for that independent. I mean, I got it, but then you're still over. Mm -hmm. But when when Miguel and I talked to to Justin last week that that's one of the things that I brought up is that during this whole process that we've been preaching a two two million dollar budget and uh, Mr. Risen says that that he's he's fine with uh, when we get down to the, the nuts and bolts of actually putting together his contract he says that he's fine with having a contract that's not to exceed the two the two million dollars. Yeah, and uh, let me let me try to put this into context. Initially, <clears throat> this is what the the vendor put together as a starting point for a discussion, <clears throat> and, and as they tend to do, he looked at the maximum exposure for the system. Now, it is more likely that the startup will be under, well under, well, I shouldn't say well under, but it will be, it would be lower the first year and increase a little the second year and a little more the third year so that over the three year period, you, we would be looking actually at something under, on average, two million per year. So if you, if you look at it as maximum exposure on year one and, and you carry that through, then yeah, it, it, would, it would be over budget. But this is not the realistic exposure for year one. There's a number of factors that, that we discussed, one being uh, exactly when that we will get to full staffing, exactly when the expectation would be to have all of the employees at these rates and essentially what he indicated is that these are really the rates and the exposure that we can see in year three of this program so this is actually the maximum exposure at year three but you year that in year one though based on this well right here only because only because this is a representation from him as a starting point for discussion of based on everything that we have seen these would be the numbers if we operated at full capacity year one with all of the elements in place that's not going to be the but again you're putting in you see i'm thinking like we did in our long-term capital planning all right our contribution i don't know if it's four hundred thousand whatever it is it's a hundred thousand for me it's three tiers of scale and then mature, right? I mean, this is like this, it, it should be way smaller in year one versus year two versus year three. Mm -hmm. And so you're front loading all the, all the back over here. And I'm like, but why? You, you haven't even ramped yet. That first year in 19, we may not get off the ground really until June. So, I mean, this is the part where, I mean, I hear you. I, mm -hmm. I know how to follow this money and this. We'll have a conversation with him at some point. I'm sure y'all will take 
mark you, make sure it goes through the proper contract process with Bill and all. I mean, whatever y'all do, y'all do. But I, I don't. <coughs> I don't want, I want for the record that we're not marking this, that we're accepting this, like you said, as is. No, or no. That, that this is like, you know, we're, we're just going to float this out here. There's no way that this should even I mean, To your point, we should see a three years. We should see a ramping as opposed to a, a front load. And again, and then you've got your startup expenses that are separate. So that's just purely like, okay, so how are we going to get there when we're just not ramping up? I mean, are you bringing all four online at the same time? I mean, see, that's the part where you're presenting a top, the, the number, but then I don't have the detail yet. I can't ask questions. So this is not y'all, but it's just like, okay, guys, uh, and I'm with you. Mike, I mean, yeah. airline. I, I, mean, I, can't, I can't really add anything sort of substantive uh, to that since um, we have to have a, you know, a clear per year projection with Property loaded, uh, you know, capital costs of right place. But I, it was not my thought, you know, that the capital would be held held separate. Now, you know, to me, it was a, it was a total package, and so it's kind of surprising to me to find out this is operating, and then and then your capital expenditures are over here. But that's that's kind of the biggest surprise for me. On um, top of two point two, that that mm -hmm. yeah, that. So the, we're we in serious pushback. <laughs> <laughs> But again, to, to, to Miguel's point, keep in mind this: these numbers are for, for a full 12 years operation. Mm -hmm. that Three will, years? No, 12 months. 12, 12, 12 months, months okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, and when we're realistically looking like eight or nine months of full operation. You know, but then we start putting stuff in front of the commission's guide. Mm -hmm. uh, that year one is 2019. It gets kind of vibrant there some kind of way. It, because it, this is the admission for me. I hope it maybe it's his document, not your document. You're just handing it all. It just it, it puts us in an awkward place. It's like, no, I didn't commit to that. I, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't. That's not what we. That's not what we were expecting. And so that's the part where we, there has to be some reconciling on this one because it's like, I just. And, and, and again, so now we're out here. It's like, no, um, the, 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 we we were clear on the two million guys. Just, we, 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 we had any conversation, y'all, we had this perfect guy, he's going to come on board, third party operator, he's been on the block, like, okay, what, mm -hmm. don't make me get my pen, I'm like, okay, go look at these marks, let me really get into this thing. It's like, I knew this day would come, right? It's like, it just seems sort of stacked. Well, one very, Chair, one, one very tangible aspect of this is what, what are we going to charge? Let's keep going. Fair. We got to keep going, guys, we got another meeting. Because that, right? that impacts this. Fix it. All right. So, fix anything else on that? We just want to keep going. Yes. Duly noted. Yes. All right. So, Miguel, can we talk? Can we jump down there? Yes. That's the next item on the agenda. Hit it. So, mm -hmm. that great segue, Commissioner. Aren't we going to miss him? Yes, <laughs> we are. Uh, well, that impacts his number, right? Yeah. We had. What yeah. number did you use? We go ahead. We discussed this a little bit at the meeting uh, last month. This is just a a follow-up on the question of, of yeah. what do we want to look at as okay. what our one way fare is going to be. Okay. So these, these, are, okay. Go ahead. these are just these are just some estimates. Okay. As to, uh, <clears throat> depending on what we charge, how many uh, annual one way trips we could expect and what our, our potential revenue uh, would be we would generate based on that particular fare. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, walk across. The, and so right in the middle is the, the one way adult fare of $2. We would anticipate 100,000 um, one way trips. This is um, point about. In that, and that, that would generate $71,000. Yeah, so we hundred thousand trips. With two dollars. With the base fare of two dollars. Base, okay, so so you have to be discounting it. Right. Okay. That would generate seventy one thousand dollars. That's right. And then All right, so that, that that okay. That's fine because then going over well, that's one way, going over the car, we don't get 
the reverse community dollar, right? Is that factored into this whole conversation of how we share when we swipe across? Yes, yeah, so yeah, that's, that's just one way to it. Got it. Yeah. We're good. Keep going. Mm -hmm. I got it. All right, go ahead. So, so basically, what what you're seeing is the, the lower your fare the more trips you can anticipate and the more revenue you can generate. The higher your fare, the less trips, the less revenue. Mm -hmm. oh. Okay. What is this second page? This is the page that Compared I presented to, to you last yeah, yeah, okay. Well, Commissioner Mulcair, what do you think? Well, <laughs> right, what is, okay, so to his point, yeah. what was the number you used to create this model? Right. From we we started off at, at two dollars per round trip and then built these other estimates around that. Now we're, we're talking about this. Well, he's presented this two million two. We're talking about this right here. You had to have a revenue. Wow. That that was determined in conjunction with discussions with Justin Rising uh, based on on the two dollar. Uh, round one-way fare okay. and the fact that we m might be able to have some con contracts for non-emergency medical trips uh, through the Department of Human Services. Okay. So it's predicated on two dollars one way. Yes. Sir. And okay, so what is two? Why can't I do two fifty? Why would we not do two fifty? The only reason I say it, just being compatible with the system that we're connected to going over to um, a more urbanized area. And maybe that's, I mean, I get it. I understand that they may, um, I, I get it. We're saying that within our county, it's a two dollar fare. Going across my mind, there's a premium uh, in my mind that well, right next door is 250. Is that called 250? They do charge 250. Uh -huh. Okay. Right all the time, very spiked. They're, they're 250 and obviously getting into homes this way. That's why you, you can keep going. Um, so, and I'm not arguing right now, I'm just putting it out there, which is right next door. And so, 50, 50 cent savings gives me how many more trips? Wait. If, if, um, if you go from $2 to 250 basically 7,000. Yeah, 7,000 7, trips. Lose seven thousand. Yeah, lose seven thousand trips. So it's nine three thousand trips, basically. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm torn. I get it. I, I just think that. What it would, would, but again, okay. Maybe what I'm rephrasing this way: but the intent is to serve the population of Texas and keep it commensurate with where we are our evolution, our digest, our affordability index. We're not across the way, which is a, a much denser, um, higher value. We're right on that transition, right on that edge. Uh, and so I'm sensitive that only one route puts us in exposure to that 250 as opposed to mm -hmm. the, the balance of the other three routes. Does that make sense? I'm, I'm trying yeah, to yeah. rationalize my own. Yeah, you're thinking the same way I am, I think. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So we would just lose seven thousand. No, we gain seven thousand. At two dollars, we would lose seven thousand riders if we go to two fifty. Two fifty. Right. If we go to two fifty. Uh, specific question: Are there? We got Route 10, 20, and thirty. Do they? They have touch points with forty. Okay, do they? Do they have touch points where you can transfer from? Yes. I don't know. Say from twenty to forty. <clears throat> On the on the ten in in twenties, uh, you can go to either the West Douglas Park and Ride Lot or the Transportation Center in okay. the, in the it third right now. and forward. Okay, yeah. right. that right. kind of blows up my idea of, of, of charging different rates, charging charging two fifty each time on Route Forty because it, the, the customers are used to paying that coming back the other way. They're used to paying two fifty anyway, so it'd be compatible with Cobb on that particular route. Better to keep it low and go high than to. But then I don't know how proper. How, I don't think that perhaps not, not a good strategy if you're not charging 250 on Route 10, 20, and 30. Well, let me offer this, if I may. Uh, one of the things that that we've looked at peripherally to to this uh, discussion 
is what are what is our competition? What are the options to to the public? Mm -hmm. One of the things that we have found is that there are a fair number of uh, potential patrons to our system that are now paying much higher fees on a steady basis. Um, this would be a discounted way for the alternative for them, which they would probably take advantage of if we give them a stop close to the location they are uh, pulling out of now uh, using Uber, Lyft, and, and the like. So at, as much as we're looking at relative to other systems, which I think is a good measure, relative to the alternative of a good number of the riders uh, that might be using the system eventually, uh, this is way, way a bargain. And you're saying two or two fifty? Two or two fifty mm -hmm. is it's super. It's a net gain. All right. So for me, it's two eighty-five a mile from Riverside to the courthouse. Seven and a half miles. You know, just from Riverside to get all the way there. It's twenty bucks a day one way, mm -hmm. just to go that distance. To say it's ten miles, just for the sake of the conversation. And so, yeah, everybody can't afford twenty dollars one way every day. I agree with you uh, when I when I live, when I meet them, when I'm at Golden Corral doing my you know my Saturday thing and um, you know, the, the workers there is way too distant. We can't wait to the system. We have to carpool. It's like you know, I share my like, we can't afford no that. Take all our tip money for that. You know you get into that like it, it gets. I, and so I well I'm only sharing that because I have a real practical experience. No, you're right. We will pick up people who right now I just got to sacrifice. And yes, I'm, I'm barely making it. Um, but um, um, it, it's a value proposition, Commissioner Moll here. Mm -hmm. I get it. Um, either way, we would benefit whether it's two or two fifty to pick up that group, so it doesn't really matter. So now we're back to how do we best serve our population? Right? So, and I don't, I don't know that there's a right or wrong answer yeah, with right. what you're going to charge with that. I think you just. It, but this, it's going to boil down to what we feel comfortable All right, so this is where I'm, I'm going to, uh, eventually we'll have a conversation with your, your third party operator. They're like, okay, guys, uh, I'm going to calculate, okay, my break even. I want to, see, I'm not that guy. I'm like, okay, I got revenue, it's basically space cost, variable cost, and I want to sit down and like, okay, I, I want to know price per unit. And, and, you know, it's so like, okay, there's a, there's a way to get to where we need to be. What should we charge? We want to break even based on this, this this fixed cost, this variable cost, infrastructure. And that's what I'm like, I'm waiting for him to like, not like just give me a number and deal me from like, okay, like, no. Uh, like, no guys, we can do better than this. It, it needs to be a sharper pencil to at least convince me to say, okay guys, I agree that it should be more than, it should be 2.2 million versus a, wait a minute, let, lay this out for me. You know, let, let's respect that some of us do get how this works. I know that some, you know, counties and some municipalities don't have the expertise to have them. Like, they're just not here. I need a little bit. So this is really cool. Just, mm -hmm. we, we, we got to do, it's got to be a little bit sharper. We're, we're serious about our long-term capital. We are committed. We're committed to transportation. I'm going to reiterate it, Mike. Mm -hmm. We're committed to all this, but we, there, there has to be some, some honor back the other way to say, okay, let's give them what they need to make a, a quality decision. I need to know the number. I need to know that it's clean. And let us make the call, but don't dealt us the number, not you. Don't be dealt the number. Like, let's get the number. I'm like, oh, Mike is, is too clean. I can go either way. But, you know, I need to know what the real costs are going to be so then I can determine, like, okay, should I do two or 250? So part of it, yes, it drives it, you know, but what they gave us is two million is operating expenses. That's my fixed cost and my variable cost that they done front side of this thing. They ain't doing no revenue. Now we're going to figure out how we're going to break even on that thing. And that's what I'm like, well, that's what's going to drive this. How do we get there, guys? You think we can have this conversation by next month? Before he leaves? It's really about him. Um, I know the contract won't be done. I, I, we got to at least have the conversation. Mm -hmm. I, I, I need his support to say, okay, Mike, you got to lock this going out the door. I mean, I, I mean that's what's important to me. He gets to weigh in, he gets like, Mike, if he's your call. <laughs> he wants me on the hook before I go. <laughs> no, I mean, but, but he gets to establish, like, no, Mike, just call it. It's like, I, I'll use that if he, he 
brings it down, then it's what it is. If he blesses it, I mean, that, that's important to me, uh, to give him that, to respect that. So for that, y'all gotta, they gotta do better with the numbers. And, and Commissioner, let me offer this. Yeah. The, the revenue that you're gonna generate yeah. from ridership, mm -hmm. whether you set it at $2 or $5. You get your money. Well, so you're not gonna get to a break even yeah. point with your operating Seven thousand. Right, so we're gonna be right, seven thousand. We're, we're gonna be short. I understand. Right. We've got a little four hundred. We we budget that bit. We like Jennifer did one hundred, two hundred thousand, three mm hundred. -hmm. We, yeah. we we get that. We we get that. But then I still need to know what the number is, yeah. right? It's more about the worst case scenario. Yeah, you you yeah. you. Right. Let's say the real case scenarios. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, and again, so show me worst case, best case, and that's when like come on. And let us make the determination. You say that this is worst case, but I don't know relative to what. <laughs> when you front loaded the numbers in 19 versus, if you were to spread them out over time, I might have came to it like, oh, okay, but you front loaded everything and said it's a plus, a plus, we gotta pay up stereo. All right, guys, we gotta keep going. I'm sorry. No, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do mention one thing that's come up as a, as a peripheral yep. discussion. Uh, I, I, I can't fathom why we would just have four shelters. Well, what am I missing here? Benches versus a shelter. Is there a difference? A bench is well, not just sit out there without we, a cover? We have money and grant for benches and shelters. Uh, the reason that we started off with just four in 2019 is we wanted to, to give ourselves a little time to operate and see where our our best pickup points are going to be. The place so, so it sounds like the four the shelters. Place. Yeah, right. four shelters sound like maybe those are your, your anchors. Big construction, big right. construction, whereas a bench is a bench is a bench. Yeah, yeah. and we, right. we actually we actually have more than that in our in our grant, but that's what we wanted to start with to, to give ourselves time to see where our our best pickups are going. Okay, to be. let's go. Yeah, that's good. Okay, I'm all right with that. Well, mm -hmm. we've marked the conversation. Um, are you looking for a recommendation? Well, really, this will come out in the contract, right? We, this is just we still, yeah, we still have a lot of discussions yeah. and negotiations to tweak no these numbers and then yeah. come back. Yeah. No commitment. Mm -hmm. But duly noted. So somewhere between two and two fifty, there's no real objection yet. It's just we just. The, okay. the, the, my final comment on that would be, as, as we're getting ready to, to go out with these public community meetings and and start advertising this more and more. But that's the question. Well, well, no, let, let's hands. come back to you. No, he's right. So might mm -hmm. if we had to make a call, we could say, well, right now the committee is recommending. What would you? What would you lean? I mean, just. I would. I would say uh, rec publicly recommend two fifty, and see what the response is. Rather than say, would you? What would you rather pay, two or two fifty? <laughs> well, yeah, you know what the answer is. And you can put and a recommend. We're recommending two fifty. It's not like it's written in stone. And, so. and see what the public response right. is. Yeah. Kind of test. Yeah. Oh hell. Yeah. 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 All right. How many people are going to say that? And we'll we'll Just say something that we're looking yeah. at. Well, right now, the committee, don't take the poor board of business, but the, the transportation committee is um, leaning toward a recommendation of 250. Just put on the committee right now. Yeah. I don't know. Right. Obligate the board of right. Yeah. You got it? Yes, sir. And then, Mark, you get that. Mm -hmm. we'll get, we can the committee is recommending 250. Yeah. And that's, we'll give you that. Okay. Without an official call, we'll sure. wait. We just sure. get the feedback, and then in our last meeting, Mike, we can officially make the up or down, and, and you know, two or two. Or do you want to go ahead and do it now? No. Well, okay. by by the next okay. transportation committee meeting, we will have had the meeting. The, that's what I'm saying. Community meetings, and yeah. we have more feedback. Yeah. So be it. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's good. All right. So Danielle will be gathering this information. Then can we just make somebody actually is some kind of way capturing? Yes. We'll do that. Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Go with you. Sorry. Okay. We got yeah. four o'clock in here. All right. The, the next item. Anything else? Okay. No, sir. That's it. Thank All right. You. The next item on the agenda: the resurfacing program. And uh, we we had some discussion about the Elmick program last time. Yep. And I circulated uh, the proposed list, and I have copies of that again. Yes. Now yeah. I'm going to be uh, also incorporating. The uh, SWAST yep. proposed resurfacing yep. list. Yep. And uh, most 
and this uh, this is based on the expectation that uh, we're going to be bidding out the SPLOS program and the ELDIC program together to try and get some some better unit pricing on, on the both of them. And uh, the, the mileage for the SPLOS for 2019 is a little less than last year. The prices have gone up somewhat. Uh, <clears throat> most... Um, How much have asphalt prices gone up? 25 percent is what we're targeting. We're going to do 25 percent less for the same amount of money. Right. Yep. So <clears throat> this, uh, in 2018, we have 12.6 miles. Next year, we're targeting 11.4. So uh, we're hoping that we get good enough pricing to be able to do the SPLOST and the ELNIG for about $4 million. Uh, the two of them again. Yes, we are inflationary. It just creeped up in uh, market prices. I, I think Mr. Mulcair is just how we set our a citizen's expectation, right? We, we're not ever obligated to any 10 miles per year, to screw no. uh, linear miles per year. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think you're doing right by trying to optimize our hand and by leveraging the volume. But I'm, I'm, I don't, I'm not concerned about needing to hedge my narrative about well, how we really got to do with five length. We're doing the best we can with the dollars that we have, right? So, mm -hmm. so it, it's okay. So, yeah, I'm going to keep going. And we haven't sent this to the board yet. No, this has not <clears throat> gone to the board because <clears throat> we need to uh, confirm that the committee is good with the budget that would be allocated to. Uh, so to we got this standing three million per year, right? Right. On this Minus, cost. well, when when you combine it with uh, with the Elmig, then. There's the match for the Elmig component uh, yes. and the, the remainder for so the two matches. The, the two of them together would be about four million. Just one, one match. Well, no, you know, say Elmig is only matched because we're using pure cash out of the spots, right? That's three million solid cash, but we take money from the spots to match the Elmig, right? The yes. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Step, right? Which is approximately five hundred thousand. Right. You know what I'm saying? It may not come out right. Yeah. Now. Okay. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah, so I, I, I wanted to run this by the committee because the next step would be if there's consensus here uh, to release this for all the commissioners to take a look at and just confirm. Okay, so the element number is determined by what we submit to roll mile. Commissioner Mulcair, do we need to keep it tight? Do we maximize it at 10 miles? That's 10 miles per commission district or 10 miles total? Total. But this is the SPLOS. This yeah, is the SPLOS, yeah. Four, this SPLOS, yeah. I will stay with me. All right, so <coughs> I'm using the Elmig. Is that a similar volume of 10 miles? It's uh, close to 10 miles, yeah. The Elmig is 9.6 miles. All right, so but here we are. So we go is two, two and a half miles. In either case, mm -hmm. that's going to take an entire budget. Yeah. Mm -hmm. no, either bucket. Yep. Take, mm -hmm. take your pick. In my, in my mind, you got to go to right. Trying to make it thick, and feel good, slide it on. So anyway, again, I'm I'm, I'm using myself, Mr. Walker, so for a marker, I get one roll. It's a big roll, like Post Roll, Riverside. I mean, Riverside took uh, seven and a half percent, seventy-five percent of my budget that one year, but that's where we were swinging, right? We, we had like we did it internally. Uh, I'm okay. Uh, I know mine is more sacrificial in the sense that sorry guys, I, you know, I, but what do you think from your perspective that you didn't? You don't have that constraint that you have to make up. So, is ten miles enough? Too much? I mean, I'm relatively, are you okay? No, no, I'm, no, I'm fine. I'm okay, I'm fine with that. We have to set some sort of meter, and you know, it, it's very subjective. You know, yep. So, I think this is as good a way to go as any. We, historical. We got that historical run to see when we we're always about that number. We're okay. I'm fine. But to the same point, there were thirteen. Of course, there were less miles than this one lead road, but you had 13 on the L main, 13 roads. Yeah. Of course, they were smaller roads. Right. But yeah, that one road, the big one, it'll take up a whole. Either one. It'll eat up a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, but uh, as a as a consolation to you, Commissioner, the, the uh, effort that goes into it is not going to be 
probably. Most of it will be used. We'll see. We'll see. We're, we're okay. You're talking so, about in the context of widening? Correct. Okay. Yeah, they see it plowed up. Yeah, only the edge is going to get plowed up, right? Right, but, but the bulk of it in the middle will be at the correct elevation and it will be solid enough to be That's able good. to use. That's good. So we're going to handle it more. It's kind of like building the, uh, the uh, road widening in, uh, in phases. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, you're okay with the number? Yes, yeah. yeah. Go. All right, so do we need a recommendation to we, we would need a recommendation. Uh, now, I, I, I do need to float. Well, the, the recommendation then, um, if you could, if you could uh, put a caveat in there that to the extent that the other commissioners may want to swap out a road because of yeah. different priority, as long as their, the mileage doesn't increase or, or is uh, comparable, then, then that would be. Okay, I'll make, that yeah, I'll make a motion. The Transportation Committee uh, recommended the full board of the 2019 proposed SPOS resurfacing program with the proviso that individual com commissioners may realign within their districts uh, certain substitutions. Not to exceed the 10 miles mm -hmm. in total? Mm -hmm. The 11. Not, not, not to exceed 11.41. Not to exceed 11.41. Yeah, that's right. That's great. All right, we have a motion on the floor. Can I get a second? Sir. Any discussion? All right, I call for motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Any opposed? Carries recommendation goes to the board. Okay. I also <coughs> will need um, to put the LMIG uh, list on the agenda upcoming. Uh, so, not we'll tonight. The next no, no, not at the next meeting. Mm -hmm. not tonight, but uh, if I could get a recommendation uh, similar in nature to this, that uh, the, uh, the list <coughs> is uh, 9.6 miles. <coughs> and uh, if there's uh, any particular substitution, so long as the mileage is not uh, exceeded by. Now, does that this list need to be cut because of the 25% increase in asphalt? This one, it's already been tweaked. This one already has. Right. Okay. So this is updated from the original one that was sent to the board. Just to well, it, it, it isn't it isn't updated in the sense that um, the roads have been pulled out and, and replaced. In the estimate there was the expectation that this would be covered by the only grant and the match is what's going to cover the twenty five percent in Okay. Let's understand. Okay. Let's be careful. You know, make sure I believe. I know what I just heard what you mentioned. We're not going to see three million on this loss. Right? We said three million, six years, eighteen million. It's 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 three million per year. Like we have to do everything within that three million per year. That's that's so. Uh, in addition to the LMIG match. This is the three million commissioner is the total Dollars allocated, but out of that comes the allocation for the element mm -hmm. component. Yeah, the match is a piece, piece of that. Yeah. So let's just say it's half means. So that means that two point five, two point five, and that's what matches. Perfect. Okay, right. Correct. Mm -hmm. right, just ball. Right. So then move to the element, which now we move for. Mm -hmm. It's another two point five million type of. We do that basically all the same dollars. It's a little bit less, 11.4 now to 9. Point, okay, 9. No, we're, we're looking at, at 1.5 for the LMID and 2.5 for the SPLOS for a total of about 4. 4 million. Mm -hmm. 2.5. And 1.5. Okay. So we have to work 25% of the match of the LMID. Okay, right. It works about about that. So that's total we, twenty we roll miles. List I can look at. I know I've seen it before. And so I so my twenty roll miles. Sure. Mm -hmm. I wish they pop in now. Mm -hmm. So how many? Yeah. We're spending five hundred thousand dollars per roll, basically. Did I do that right? 
Well, um, some of some of the districts will get uh, two rows smaller. That's good. Yeah, yeah, we are. We know how that seems out. Right. right. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. You need to give us some calculation. You packing in all again, man? Huh? I'm creating a file. Okay. Mm -hmm. So kind. All right. So this is the. Okay, no, no, yeah, okay, no change. Here we go. It's not 20. Uh, Almost 21. It is 21 miles. I'm between the two programs. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. District 2 is okay. All right, so we go. Yeah, same row as the I'm fine. Okay. okay. We get to move these around, all right? Do you expect us to get back to you? Yes. Um, Do you have a date in mind? Actually, last week. Last week. <laughs> we were doing good. Listen, did we respond? Uh, not everybody responded. Mm -hmm. I know I did. We were at a retreat. How do you ask us? <laughs> no, no, no. I respond. And I understand. And I don't see it. You don't see your response anymore? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. He said there's no changes in there. No, we have not incorporated those changes. Mm -hmm. I think you have to. That was Carol. I think it was one. I asked you about it. Yeah, Jaeger. Okay, all right. So let me, let me do the note. I got it. You want to put this on the next agenda then? Yeah. Next month. Next to December. December. Yeah. December. So, okay. So, I want to frame this accordingly with their votes. And doing our board commission retreat. And even, I think we even mentioned it down. We, we alluded to it, but in our, our retreat, Mr. Walker, correctly, we had a public discussion uh, in which each commission district would uh, tackle a dirt road accordingly. We thought that that was important, um, that while we recognize all of them may not warrant or may not be perceived as um, uh, warranted to rebuild, research, so whatever it is, you know, like some citizens, like in Summer Lake, Mr. You know, they, they've been here for 52 years paying into a system, and yet you know, their stuff keeps getting washed away. And so, we recognize that it's not as easy as a straight resurfacing at Michigan where we just roll right here's the stuff that you're really going to have to go out there, do some scoping, do some estimation. It may not be, be a full construction of a road, but it still could be some type of reconstruction, some reinforcement, uh, something to that effect. And so we, we, we as a board has a consensus, agreed to do this. Uh, and so I don't know what that means, but we're going to put a marker in our budget to accommodate that, and you still have to estimate what that means for us. But we think that's important that, you know, just like we did Warren Road, Mark, I mean, I think you just came on board yeah. with the Warren Road. Mostly Warren, though, was developer. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it was developer, but I did, and Miguel, man, I've seen it yet, but I did send him an email today requesting a list of all the dirt roads in the county. And then we've got to come up with some sort of base cost estimate. Now, this will be, it's not written in stone simply because you can't just say, well, all dirt roads cost $120,000 a mile. You can't say that. They're all different. But we're going to try to come up with some sort of way to say, okay, yes, if this is your road, this is approximately how much money we're talking about. And I think what we're, what we're trying not to do is commit to a whole crew of just rebuilding the yeah. roads. You know, it, it doesn't make sense. We're just saying we're picking, like one road was my first five years. That's all they used to wear me out. You know, right there by Bomar and the cut through from Brooklyn. It's between two big roads. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. but they, but they, the people were being, some people didn't want it, some people wanted it. I mean, I got wild over that. Like, okay, come on, Chairman Morgan, can you, can, you, can you get this done for me? And so I think we have maybe one situation like that at each commission. So we're doing it more as a one-off. We're wanting to pilot this and see what that means. I'm not ready to Mr. Mulker to commit mm -hmm. that we're going to have a whole crew that's just going to do this. And so I don't think we want to send that message. But we do no. have some strategic um, athletes, some, some citizens out there that, that have been lobbying. And, and, and they should be heard as well, as much as everybody else. Like, well, you, 
that's too complicated, that's too hard, that's what it costs, I ain't got time for that. Their voice should be heard too. Yeah, if, if, if I may. That is the fiscal component and, and the policy component that you speak of. There is also uh, the logistics of how you develop these estimates. And, and they are going to be very rough early on for, for sure. There, there's a lot of elements that go into transitioning from a gravel road to a paved road. You got stormwater uh, considerations that come into play. You have to have minimum criteria for your lanes and, and the like. So, so it is a pretty significant change and sometimes you may have residents that don't want to be on a paved road in the mix with others that do. And to the extent that you are considering uh, a policy uh, going forward with paving of, of dirt roads, I think perhaps a policy might be in order as to how you go about establishing the logistics of within that road, what level of support should you have? Should you consider the desires of all the residents or uh, mm -hmm. a predominance of the residents versus just making a decision from a fiscal standpoint that, okay, we're going to target this road this year. Mm -hmm. That certainly is a component. Uh, but I would submit that, that uh, and I've had uh, uh, instances in the past in other jurisdictions where th th we, there was an impetus to pave by exactly 50% of the residents of the property owners on a road. And the other 50 were just as adamant that they did not want the road. Yeah, I, I think our policy to, to that point, that do, you know, speed humps in that way. Mm -hmm. Right, we went through all that, and 75% had to go out there and get a, you know, roughly 75% of a thousand got it. And I, I think it's without duly noted. But are we focused on major subdivisions and major dense areas with that being people? Or are we really just talking about people who are isolated, people who are, uh, you see what I'm saying? One road was impacted yeah. by a lot of volume, but it was only what two, three houses. Yeah, I would say most street. of these would be a small number of residents. Yes, yeah, yeah, so I think. We, we, yeah, yeah. So duly noted on the policy, we, we do get it, but I think we still come back. It's not just a policy. It's it's not just a fiscal part. It's just. But okay. Why not? Why can't we provide this for them? And know we have to go through that work, but that's what we're at the will of the citizens. And so it's a pleasure to the board to sort of like, okay, everybody gets one project in their district, figure it out, we're gonna pilot this. And so we're, we're trying to move beyond, I mean, duly noted, but we're looking for you to be able to figure that part out and come up with a way in which we like, okay, we wanna, that's what we want to be fulfilled. So Mark, you said you've talked to him already, right? He's gonna give you a list. Mm -hmm. He's, yeah, right. He's gonna work on. We'll get the list of the commissioners, y'all can prioritize them. And in the meantime, we'll be looking at some sort of We're only looking way, for one. Some we just only committed to Mike, Mike, we just committed to just doing one, not that we're gonna go tackle. We, we did yeah. not agree to tackle and pave all the dirt rolls and make this a No. Well these are um, without I don't know the number, yeah. but they will be very expensive. We got to make that call yeah. and again. We got a bunch of fluorine chloride in our budget that we I saw, so we recognize we just it's just sort of a, a one off. That's all. It'll be more expensive than the fluorine chloride. Well, well, you might be uh, relocating, uh, you might be relocating you too. Yeah. 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 Water lines, I mean, there's no telling. We have to have yeah. the yeah. answer, those too, and they'll be in the pavement. Look, and we may get into this that what we're doing may cost more than the house that is next to and that I can't. Yeah. But we need to have the answer. Yeah. And so that's the part where, okay, staff, mm -hmm. we've got equipment, we've got people, we need to be able to go out there and estimate, scope this real quick. We had standby engineers that we've been in, we had them 10 contracts. Like, I'm, I'm sitting here like, okay, guys, do we know that? Let's just get the information, see what it says to us. And Mike, we may say, oh, we're going to change our mind. I'm just yeah. saying. Yeah. I mean, if you get something, we, we don't know this right now versus like, well, we're having an anecdotal and relative conversation. Like, no, we're committed to this. Give us the information, let us make that call. That's all I'm trying to get to. Well, obviously, the, the top part of the equation, 
kind of getting ahead of ourselves, I know, but the, the top of the equation is uh, how many domiciles per mile are you looking at? If you're going to benefit, you know, three houses on a mile or 19 houses on a quarter mile, I mean, that's got to be at the top of the equation. Mm -hmm. Understood. All right. We're good. You got this? Y'all, mm -hmm. we're good. We're stepping away. All right. What else we got? Do we need to make a recommendation on the LMIG? Yes, the yeah. LMIG to be prepared for uh, the December, was it? Fourth, fourth or third? Fourth or fifth? Fourth. Yeah. Fourth okay. 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 It's your turn. And with the same caveat that the commissioners can move. Can adjust. Yeah. Can adjust the list and stay, accordingly. And stay, and stay within the uh, ascribed uh, calculated mileage of 9.67. So the motion? Yeah. Second. So we'll wait, what now? This is for the LMA. I'm gonna make sure y'all got this. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So this, uh, we've got a motion on the floor for um, um, as stated for the LMA 2019 uh, with the proviso, proviso that uh, is what, 9.67 miles. Um, and with the proviso that officers can move the list around. Can I get a second? Yep, I get a second. Yep, right. mm -hmm. so a second. Any discussion? Any changes? All right. All say aye. 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 All one nay. Nay. All right. Motion carries five. All right. So that was the LMIG. You good? I'm good. Did I need to, do we need to edit to make sure it's on December 4th? Or we already know that. Or it's queued up. I mean, it's, it's re yeah, recommendation. Right. It's queued up. Okay, next item on the agenda is a discussion about Whitestone Culvert. That project is uh, approaching the bid stage yep. uh, on the next uh, board agenda. I'm going to have a request to authorize to go out for construction bids okay. on this project. Yep. And uh, the funding uh, to, to be able to support the estimate is what uh, we need to have a discussion about. Uh, there is some funding that has already been secured. Uh, however, the, the estimate, once the, the final design was put together, has exceeded uh, the original estimate substantially. So we need to, uh, to figure out. Well, I, I think. Uh, Initially, I believe it was around, and Mark, you can correct Initially, me. it was six, six, six hundred thousand. And the bids were bidded out as a triple ten by ten, and it came in somewhere around seven hundred thousand. So then it was proposed by the previous uh, director of Department of Transportation to go with a prefab bridge. Yep. Um, mm -hmm and install it with county employees. And that transition led to Miguel. Miguel got with employees uh, of LeVon over at the maintenance and they decided they, no, we cannot do this in-house. I said, okay. So right now, so we're working on prefab arch cover mm -hmm. uh, and the construction estimate by Hughes Ray Company is currently at 1.29 million, 1.3 million. We have the fund. Who pays for that? The county pays. It's based on the county. It's all county. So right now we have approximately $150,000 that would be remaining from the bond we yep. received from Lexon yep. on Whitestone yep. after we top it out. Right. So that's based on a topping estimate from two years ago. You know, it's checking, checking numbers. So 150,000, 50,000 from the WSA, 75,000 from the developer that we have in hand. Yep. 75,000 voted by the board to allocate from the county. Yep. 75K. Uh, GDOT, 150,000. Mm -hmm. The total for those is approximately $500,000. Yep. Plus, we're looking at some bonds on projects where we have completed the work. So, yep. uh, give you an example, Bookmark Pod C, Pod D, uh, 
couple of different numbers. So we're, we're checking those. Miguel and James are working together. Check those numbers. See how much money is available. We can add to this 500000 It may be 20000 It may be zero. It may be 100000 I don't know. So there's so either way, there's a balance that would need to come from somewhere. Right, so where would we pull six to 700000 from? This is a bridge mm -hmm. in Whitestone, so we would propose that it came from the, the bridge portion of the blocks, which would be post road bridge. Post road. And you're looking at eight hundred thousand minus hopefully some some more funds we can find. Mm -hmm. So you would take the post road praise plan that we say that again? Let me try to get this right. So it's post road bridge we say uh, the project was originally estimated two point five to yeah. three point two million. It's only gonna cost us approximately five hundred thousand, I think is what we have estimated, correct? Mm -hmm. So we so there's still some money and that is one of the categories that had about six to seven million remaining in it. This would be, at this time, it would be estimated at 800,000. All right, we'll go ahead and get this out the way. Yep. It's been lingering since 2009. This, this, we, this, this lingered when I came on board. History the, before the whole um, washout of the oh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. so You want to post this out? 800,000? Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is just yeah. estimated. I know, but we got to we'll go out to bed and we'll have got to put the right numbers in. I understand, but but again, not to see me. In other words, find some. In other words, from the spots, we'll give eight hundred thousand, and that's it. Or not to exceed. Not to exceed. Not to exceed. Not to exceed. Nine hundred thousand. Not to exceed. Or we can wait and do the recommend. We can do as far as the allocation. We can decide that whenever we get the actual construction. We, could we make a recommendation to commit money from the post road loss savings to this project and determine, the, and, and determine the amount later? Uh, well, we still have just estimated it. Yeah, but we're already, we, in essence, being on the list and being up consideration, we're already somewhat committed to this, right? We, mm -hmm. we already know it's implied. I think at, at some point we have to put, like, okay, not to exceed. Let's say, let's say not to exceed 800000 and if we need to revisit it by we can revisit seventy-five thousand, we can okay. we'll revisit we can do that. Okay. All right. So and hopefully this number is overestimated. Okay. So it does have a twenty percent contingency in it of two, yeah. over two hundred thousand. We're probably okay with that. Mm -hmm. I make a motion that we reallocate the post road of uh savings uh, to the Whitestone culvert slash bridge replacement, not to exceed eight hundred thousand dollars. Okay. 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 All right. We got a motion and a second. Do we have any discussion? If there's none, all in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? Motion carries. Aye. All right. Knock it out of the way. Perfect. Thank you. All right. We're rolling. All right. Next item. Uh, be prepared for when's it going to be finished. <laughs> <laughs> right. I did my part. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we at the last meeting we talked about pavement evaluations. I know yep. we're going to have four o'clock uh, meeting to to uh, revisit uh, some of some of the finer details of, of the option. So uh, I won't belabor the point here. Uh, I think uh, there's again different different approaches to it as we will discuss in more detail or, or see in more detail a little later. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, the costs are different depending on the approach, and so uh, we will probably need to be in position in terms of budgeting for what we're going to do in the very near future. So, uh, at some point, we're going to need to have a, a recommendation as to the methodology and uh, the associated budget going forward. Uh, I did have a BIR uh, in the budget uh, proposal. 330? Three, 300,000. Okay. And uh, depending on 
which route we decide to go and, and how we face this in, if that is the desire to do, uh, then would be what our budget associated with it is. Okay. And, and that's all I'll say about that at this time. We got time in our next meeting, Commissioner Okay, to hold off on what once we get educated, recognizing that at the same time we're trying to yeah. adopt a budget. I mean, all this is going to be that last meeting. Mm -hmm. We close it out, you know how it we do it. Um, mm -hmm. But you're comfortable with that. Yeah. That we're going to, I want to put a record for you just for the record that we mm -hmm. talked about transportation. We know we're going to go to a formal education in about an hour, less than an hour, rather. Mm -hmm. and, and 20 minutes. 20 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. Less than an hour. And, and so it was more of that, so it's not to right. blame this one. Okay, keep okay. going. Very good. All right. Next item at, uh, on the agenda is a capital transportation fund policy discussion. We yep. did have some brief discussion about that at the last meeting. Yep. And uh, one of the things that, that uh, would in my estimation, would uh, need to be uh, incorporated into such a policy is a target uh, budget, uh, an allocated budget for, for, that, uh, for that fund, okay. which would have a, a commensurate uh, budget allocation for, or maybe at some point in the future a surplus potential. Uh, but uh, so one of the elements that I would recommend is, as we go forward uh, composing this, this policy is that there be a target minimum amount of unallocated funds available at some uh, juncture of the year. So you may, you may say, well, uh, once we go through the budget process uh, at the end of each year, we look at the unallocated balance and we Board would commit to uh, you know, adding funding to maintain that minimum amount, or if you have excess funds, which could happen, not likely, but it could, then um, potentially you would just either leave it there or have that funding allocated to whatever other means. So that so that would be one component that I would recommend uh, in the policy. Obviously, another one that, that I've seen that kind of peripherally play out uh, over the last several months is uh, some sort of perhaps either allocation uh, amongst the various uh, commission districts or uh, some sort of consensus as to how, uh, how that funding gets distributed or allocated to projects. The other. So those are the two components. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was uh, jotting down some notes that kind of in the back of my mind have been for a long time uh, for the uh, capital transportation fund. Uh, I think it's going to take a, a study group. By the way, I don't have a real kind of a consensus or a, a very thorough discussion here in, in, uh, in 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I, Mr. Chairman, what I would recommend is, is that uh, any interested parties, and I would be one, I think, and certainly uh, uh, D Director uh, Valentine would be, uh, to just render some things in paper for discussion uh, via email, including yourself or Mark or anybody else. Uh, render some thoughts to paper, and it would be the, the scope of appropriate use of the fund. Uh, you know, is it grant matches or immediate right-of-way procurement or you know some things like that and then uh, to your point sources uh, annual contribution okay we've, we finished up Whitestone and we've got uh, $82,000 does that go uh, back to the general fund or is that something we can allocate to replenish fund the capital transportation fund in other words project completed project residuals and some things like that. So I would like to, like I say, have be prepared to uh, present something uh, collectively in our next meeting. Uh, what, what's, what's your pleasure, Mr. Chairman? Yeah, I, I, and we talked about this in the Finance Committee yesterday, and what I handed to you is something that I asked Jennifer to provide us as far as um, different constraints that you would put on a fund, mm -hmm. uh, whether it's committed, assigned, unassigned, because if I looked at the Capital Transportation Fund today, we were trying to reconcile um, and this is where we got in this whole conversation, which is like, well, right now, based on uh, what was presented in the finance, we have a 
capital transportation bond of roughly seven hundred dollars in debt group. I'm like, okay, well, are you saying I've got this much money to work with? Because certain projects have fell away, and so my 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 push on 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 the, on the team, Mr. Mulvey, was like, okay, I need to know this number solid. Because what we did was we based on long term capital planning, we pushed off money that we thought at least a minimum of five hundred thousand mm -hmm. from nineteen to twenty. So this is where I understand. I understand you're, you know, get this. Everybody has a. They're gonna ask. That's why I sometimes push back. Well, I want, you know, what I want. You want money, but I need a little bit more detail, right? It ain't that easy. You know, it's easy to say, hey, I want to get five hundred dollars, two hundred fifty. That one shot commit. But like, okay, can I get a report? Give me. Get it. So I, I'm just saying. So it's we've got this five hundred thousand out here. And so my my issue is there's no. We gotta make this decision the same day, basically, you know, by pushing this on. We ain't gotta do nothing. We can get down the path that we've always done way till later last. Oh, I see Pete far as the budget. Yeah, because I am trying to apply the policy along with the budget that we currently but we may not get there at your point. Yeah. We may we, we certainly we certainly don't have time. Right. So we may have time to just come up with a draft or something and then the new yes. administration will take it forward. Uh, at least it was a try. Mm -hmm. uh, because it doesn't have to be done while I'm here. Just I, I have your commitment. I know I have your commitment. You know I'm going to do it. Yeah. yeah I, you know I'm, I'll mm -hmm. the policy done. Uh, and, and duly noted sources, uses, and approval. Sources, use, and approval mechanism. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that Jennifer recommended, our director of chance, um, director of finance, talked about is um, Mark was not committed. We signed and committed. The yeah, you have that's assigned and that's committed. Signed, and committed. Committed. Committed it. But the board of commissioners always have the right to uncommit something. I mean, some of what we just went through by sure. default, Commissioner sure. Morgan, we actually have a policy based on the rules that we put in place. We committed some money, mm -hmm. and then we uncommitted it and reassigned it somewhere else. Just a minute ago. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. uh, or last year during the budget process. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess my question is back to your mind, you're looking for a minimum amount or some type of dedicated amount. And I don't know if the board of commissioners is just in that healthy of a position to put ourselves in that place where. We're operating less than five percent of our overall you know, the cap is by we're operating on a nickel. Like that's, right? We're operating on a nickel. So while I, I wouldn't mind putting the, the language in there per se, I think it's always got to be a discussion of the board commission without that type of binding, right? I, I think it's got it. Yeah. It's got it. Well, understood. But but if I may, Commissioner, unless you have a certain level of discretionary funding. You're not going to meet the goals of the fund itself in terms of taking advantage of grant opportunities or matching, leveraging. Mm -hmm. So, so inherent in in the intent of the fund is having that flexibility. Ah, okay, so stay with me. So, my commission will here. We had both five leads sitting in there. Mm -hmm. We did a healthy appropriation allocations to this to put, put that moment. Then we began to use Before it. Before the bill, yeah, right, five hundred million, right. Five million. Five million. Five, five million. Not, but, but, okay, mm -hmm. but then we began to use it to cover errors or overages and not have the, we didn't mm -hmm. have the discipline, like, we just scale that list back. It was just pushed, so there was a, it, we served our own, we allowed it to happen. Mm -hmm. It's just what it was. But it's not like we don't get that. But now we've got to rebuild because now we've got another set of, you know, our priorities now are what they are, so that we, we, we get it. Do we do 500 or do we do a million? Do we wait to 2020 when you're gone? Do we push it in here now? That means there's something else get. We don't have it like that, like when we did that, because we did that during the time when that millage rate went up, mm -hmm. right? Those three straight years, right? After 14, 15. Mm -hmm. you know? So, do we know it? But we only, we're operating on a nickel. We're giving 50% of this loss to what? Transportation. Okay. It's not like we're not committed. We get that. We, we know. That on your that long term capital plan, I'm looking at what's on that list that you <laughs> submitted. It's like, look at this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're on the same page. It's like the reality when we looked at that list is like, look at this. We we can't. I, I like that. We can't get there. We're not gonna be able to do all this. We we just don't have it. And so, but we're not that we're not committed. And that you you hear what I'm saying? Sure. We're in a tough place, but transportation is important. So, Commissioner Mulk here. Well, I'm going to prepare a paper and, uh, for some suggestions going forward for everybody's scrutiny. 
All right, so that's going forward, and that's a policy, and that's long term. But then I got a budget. We can take this all live, but first of all, we got to solve this. We're recognizing that that is important. We do have some stuff that's already in queue that we don't have enough. But I think Mark, you're going to go away and talk to Miguel and make sure we, or Jennifer's going to talk to Miguel to validate that seven hundred thousand. Yeah, that's in the works. Mm -hmm. Just, so we have Thanksgiving coming up. Oh, it's okay. We, whenever we get back together. The goal was to have it before this meeting today, but. It was, this we can do it. The budget we can do it. So we'll have it next week and we'll have these numbers and some of them have shifted okay. based on you okay? You know, the project changed, you know, so we'll, we'll get to know. But see go back to the need to make sure that the reporting that you give to the feds as well as to the board of commissioners, when you tell me that this is what's in my fund, it needs to be in my fund, right? It can't move it's like, well we don't know, we can't like I need to know that it's accurate. So I know, do I need to supplement that or not supplement? You, you see what I'm saying? So we, we it's get before yeah. BM is now becoming <laughs> BM. Mm -hmm. What's going forward with the new is the right. account analyst on board? Yep. So that that's their that's their purview. I know. That would be easy. That's yeah. easy. Yeah. Yeah. One sure the number right now. I know like the jail to validate seven hundred thousand dollars. And roughly two weeks, so me and Commissioner Moore can figure out how we're going to do this. So you're, you you got to help us help you. Okay. Well, uh, that fair. That is fair. Uh, but the next item that I would like to discuss actually goes yes, to that issue. Okay. Um, if I may, it's yeah. not an item on the agenda, but but I would bring it up as a as an additional topic. Okay. So we what? we've concluded that we've satisfied the agenda. But under committee member topics, I do have an item. What would you like to talk about? Uh, I am. I have been in the process of uh, securing the funding from the ARC for the comprehensive transportation plan yeah. that we're going to get underway. The update to the plan is going to get underway in 2019. Mm -hmm. The funding allocation that is in the capital transportation fund yeah. is based on what the typical um, budget is uh, for this type of study it, over the last probably half, probably close to a decade. Uh, but in reality, uh, there there is the opportunity to while you're doing the comprehensive transportation plan update to look at different areas uh, or different um, sections of transportation a little deeper perhaps right. than um, than you normally can so saying all that to say that there is an opportunity in my discussions with the arc to get additional uh, federal funding for our state uh, the allocation typically is a uh, quarter of a million for the county. We have the opportunity to get as much as 400,000 federal funds, but it would require a 100,000 match from the county, 20%. So it would be 400,000 from uh, federal funds and, uh, and 100,000, 20% from the county. So that would require an adjustment or reallocation from the capital transportation fund to go from what it currently is as a uh, 250,000 federal and 62,500 local county to go to 400,000 federal and 100,000 local. I, I think I did it real quick. Let me see 42 to 100. Yeah, okay, so we're taking it out of this seven hundred thousand. I don't quite know that it's a seven hundred thousand, but we'll take seven hundred thousand, so one hundred thousand out of seven hundred thousand and commit it, re remove it, put in there. Actually, it would be going from sixty-two five to one hundred thousand. So, be, so it's thirty. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thirty-seven. All right, so, yeah. It, it goes to a deeper level. So, what does that mean beyond, like, okay, well, per your maps? Binder um, pin on numbers. It would um, it would mean that we we can have additional analysis made of target areas. For example, what has uh, the 
closing of certain railroad crossings done to mobility north and south there? What has the influx or the implementation of a transit system done, and what are the needs related to that system for the next uh, five years? These I, 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 I get the needs, but I'm, again, I'm, You got to get to a be You got to get a raw numbers. Bring in the analysts that actually can do the work. I know we don't put y'all in that spot, but I, I will only support it if I can get down to real numbers, not just some. Well, we I, mean, I want real numbers. If, if, if you're saying that within this we get real financial analysis on some area, on something that I'm getting, but not just just narrative. I'm, I'm just to your point. We're going to a deeper level. Mm -hmm. Mr. Walker, I just yeah. I need numbers. If you're gonna focus on this area, you're gonna talk about like I want feasibility. What's the whole point? Yeah. We know what the grant coverage well, is. Well I know what it means. Well we don't know what the work is. Actually right. the deliverable is and what the cost for the deliverable is that there. We know what the grant is. We know what the yeah, we know what the grant is, what the match is, and we know that we are going to get additional effort into this comprehensive plan. But what chair, the chairman is saying is it, but this this study, is it going to cost us all of that money or is it going to cost us, you know, three hundred and eighty thousand dollars or or three sixty two, you know? Well, we we certainly will not know until we do the RFQ and, and then go through the process, but the the cost will not exceed five hundred thousand. That's amazing. If I can get the numbers out of 5,000, that, well, I'm not certain. So you need to make a decision today? Um, well, before I can proceed to, to to finalize the details of the contract with the ARC, I would need a decision. So Are we already down the path on this? I mean, again, so we... Well, we, we're already on, down the path with the existing numbers, and so what I'm suggesting is the opportunity to you make this a more in robust in hand in hand 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 hand. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. what we've already got. Don't we say well. <coughs> We're amending our cost by what thirty five. Thirty seven thirty seven thousand five. So we're already committed. Mm -hmm. We've already allocated this money. Mm -hmm. It's a model that let's an escalation. Mm -hmm. But again, I I need confirmation. That we'd be able to get down to an analytical level. That's my only so I'm okay with the provision. That it can't just be, like I said, needs assessment. Like right? we already did that, so you'll do a needs assessment. It's like I get that, but I, I and I'm okay if we go to we're not looking at transit, we're looking at whatever we're looking at. Mm -hmm. But we we need we need the analytic level. We we should never go through that place where we we, we and I, I don't want to get well, into it. Let, let me offer this. It, and we can get into as much detail as this as we have time for, I guess. Uh, we're running out of that, but yeah. but uh, for example, one of the elements that we would look at as well are quarters. So we would take, we would analyze current projections for the Lee Road corridor and that extension. Uh, it would tie all of those elements together and re uh, reallocate traffic based on what the projection is for 2040, 2050. So, okay, you make it. I, I think I get it. I just I'm not hearing what I think I would be looking for, but I, I get it. it's another it's I get it. Your call. Make a motion. It's only I, I get the amount. I'm fine. What's what's your uh, deadline? Uh, is there a deadline? Because we've already got the initial grant. He said we've got a con. He's well, to yeah, the, the, we, we're, we're finalizing the details of the contract because that the grant will be formalized through a contract that I would bring to the board. What I need to let the ARC know is, are we going to stick to the original allocation or are we going to take advantage of this additional funding that's available? Our expenditure will be leveraged for the one. I get it. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm fine. I'm going to let this go. I'm, I'm fine. We're talking about uh, quote me the number. What what do we match now, and what do we need? We need to match a hundred thousand. What are we matching now? Sixty-two thousand five hundred. Okay. Thirty-seven five. Thirty-seven five. Make a motion to amend the uh, comprehensive planning allocation. Yeah. Second. That's a recommendation. Mm -hmm. This is a full recommendation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just do it over. 
All right, I'd like to make a, uh, I'd like to get a motion uh, for a recommendation from the um, Transportation Committee to uh, amend the scope of work in the existing comprehensive plan that involves transportation to the tune of how much? 37, no more than 37.5. Not to exceed 38,000. Additional funding. Additional funding. So mm moved. -hmm. Say. All in favor say aye. Aye. No. Motion carries. This meeting is adjourned.